Subuser is a program that makes your Linux desktop more secure. And it does so by putting Linux desktop applications in their own Docker containers. You can find out more about Subuser by going to the GitHub repository, Subuser. There you'll find a video called What is Subuser? And you'll find out lots of information about what it does and how it works. For now, I'm just going to show you how to install Subuser. Installing Subuser is pretty simple. You need to install Docker, add yourself to the Docker group, download the Subuser repository, and add the Subuser repository's bin directory to your path. Once you log out and log back again, you're log back in again, you're done. So, installing Docker. Docker can be installed by going to docker.io, clicking on getting started, jumping to the installation instructions, and following the instructions for your distribution. For me, on Debian Wheezy, I had to install it from binaries. I also had to install a new kernel. This seemed really scary. It wasn't. I installed it from backports, and it was pretty simple. You'll find instructions by searching on Google. So, I have Docker installed, and the Docker daemon is running. Now I need to add myself to the Docker group. In order to do that, I go over to a terminal that's root, and I type group add docker to create the group. If the group already existed because my distribution was smart, it'll show you an error message, but nothing bad will happen. So just try that command. On Ubuntu, you don't need to because it'll be already done for you. The step that you do need to do on all distributions is to add yourself to the Docker group. And you do that by editing the etc group file. I'll do that with Vim. And you see here's a big list of groups. The last one is Docker. And at the end of the line, I can add my username to that group. I save my changes, and I exit out of the root terminal. Now I want to get sub, the subuser uh, repository. I do that with git clone. And the name of the repo or the URL. It tells me that the path already exists because I already cloned it. Uh, but just to show you that it's all, it works from a clean, I'll do this again. Okay, so it clones it, and I have a subuser directory somewhere here. I have a lot of things in my home directory. And when I look in my subuser directory, I have a bin directory, some stuff that you don't need, a logic directory, which is the program logic, and programs that can be installed, and the readme. So what I needed to do is I needed to add the bin directory to my path. Just because we're paranoid, we're going to look at what's actually in the bin directory. You see, the only thing in the bin directory right now is subuser. As I install more programs, those programs, uh, as I install more programs with subuser, those programs will be added to this directory uh, as executables. But for now, it's just subuser. And when I add it to my path, I'll be able to run subuser. So in order to add the bin directory to my path, I need to go to bash.rc, vim bash dot, dot bash rc and go down to the very bottom. Then I need to make a new path assignment. Path equals dollar sign home slash subuser bin colon dollar sign path. It's really important that you make sure this is written correctly because if you overwrite your path with something wrong, you won't be able to use your terminal. So, what I've done is I've added the subuser bin directory to the beginning of my path. That means that if I install Firefox with subuser, the Firefox that is installed with subuser will take precedence over the Firefox that is installed normally. So when I type Firefox, I will get the subuser contained Firefox. If I were to put the subuser 
bin directory at the end of my path, like I've done with the cabal bin directory, then it wouldn't take precedence over it. But since we're going to be installing normal programs uh, that are already installed in most systems, we want to have the subuser bin directory first. So when I save my bash rc file and I log out and log back in again, I'll be done. Subuser is installed. 